All right, how's everybody doing? This is the Comic Samurai. I wanna welcome you to my next video. And tonight we're gonna to be doing another Let's Rank Challenge. This is where we look at a run on a series and assign every cover, letter, grade, and then pick our favorite and award it that special S tier ranking. And tonight we're gonna to be looking at Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars. Now, it was brought to my attention by one of my viewers, James Moss, thank you, that Secret Wars turns 40 this year and it's hard for me to believe that but what a perfect time to take a look at these covers and review them so let's go ahead and jump right in now in 1984 when this came out written by Jim Shooter Mike Zeck did most of the covers with some help from Bob Layton but this first cover was done by Mike Zeck and it is an all-time classic they put it on t-shirts. They use it as examples of a great cover. And this really is a defining cover for the 80s. The colors on it, the characters, the poses, the style, the inking, the coloring, the printing, the layout, everything sums up the 1980s and what was great about comics then. And this one deserves an A. All right, let's go ahead and move it on. Next up, we got issue number two, of course, and this is another Mike Zek cover here, and it features Magneto in the center there. And I always like a bifurcated cover where you can fold it in half, and it's symmetric, and the two halves are almost mirror images of each other, and I love that. And you've got all these heroes floating heads around the exterior there. The colors on this one, I do like this one. It's a great follow-up. You know you're gonna get a mass amount of heroes involved in this. And you don't know if Magneto's a hero or a villain, but this one works for me on every level. I love it, it's a great cover. I'm giving this one a B, just because it doesn't quite reach that epic level that number one set the bar at, which is a high setting. Next up, we got issue number three here, and this was a battle cover done by Mike Zek. And it features the X-Men fighting Spider-Man. And I love that the wall crawler can take on and avoid all those uh, missiles and fists and uh, other heroes coming at him. He's dodging Cyclops, optic blast there. I love that Nightcrawler's bamfing into existence here. It is a great cover. It is just a little bit straightforward. I wish the angle was a little more dynamic, but it is a great cover. And again, I've got to give this one a B. All right, moving on, we've got issue number four here, and this was the first one that Bob Layton did, and this right here is one of my all-time favorite covers ever done. I remember seeing this <clears throat> as a young boy on the racks in a drugstore and just saying, what is this? It was too scary for me. I didn't buy it. I wasn't ready for it yet, but this cover really was dramatic and impactful for me with the Hulk holding the load of this entire mountain that the villains had dropped on all of the heroes there. And the Hulk is the only one who can save everybody. If he wasn't there, I would love a what if story of what if the Hulk hadn't been there to catch the mountain that the villains dropped on all of the heroes here. Bob Layton captured such a great image. I love looking and seeing all those other strong heroes KO'd, but the Hulk, the strongest there is, is the one hero who's able to save everybody and hold that mountain up. I love this cover. I wish that I had an A plus ranking because this is one of my favorites of all time. I love that cover. Next up, we got issue number five here and Bob Layton did the cover on this one. And I got to say, this is not one of my favorites here. I do like the layout of all these characters here and the incoming dangers from the edges there. It does sum up the 80s for me with the costume design, especially on Rogue there. But something about Bob Layton's iteration of Wolverine never hit home with me. I always hated it when they would draw Wolverine's claws as just two lines that tapered to a point. There was no edges, no gleam. You couldn't even tell it was metal. I didn't like that. And it's a shame because Bob Layton is recognized as being the first person to really being able to draw metal well. And he really did a great job on Iron Man. He dropped the ball a bit here on Wolverine's claws. I also don't really like when there's a focal point in the middle and everything is going out towards the edge, like Cyclops' optic blast here, but I don't like it when things are coming in also from the edges, like all these villains put in silhouette there, and it doesn't work. If you're gonna have things coming in from the edges, they better be well lit. I didn't like the use of the darker ink and colors on these images coming in 
to the center focal point. And for that reason, this one only rates as a C for me. I do like Bob Layton's work, but I really wish he would have done such a great job on Wolverine Claws. He missed an opportunity on that one. All right, next up we got number six here. I'm just going to call it Secret Wars. All of the price guides and everything call it Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars, but this was always just Secret Wars to me. Anyway, this one features all of the villains here, and it's another image done by Bob Layton. And this one he did right. All of the energy of this image is going out to the edges. Nothing is coming in. The lighting is pretty consistent. I don't really care for that orange, white, yellow, and purple together. That is a strange combination with the green. It's all of these mixes of colors. It does work for me though because it is villains and they do kind of associate with those colors. This is better than the last one. I do like it. I love seeing villains when they're featured and done right and this one's going to garnish a B from me. Next up we got issue number seven here and this was a 12 issue limited series. So we're over the halfway point. This one featured the image of Spider-Woman here, but they sure didn't give her a very prominent place on the cover. I wish they would have done that. I really don't like that pink in the background there. They could have chosen any other color, especially when it's offset by white there. For some reason, on an action war, secret war comic book, pink just doesn't really fit that mood for me. But I do like the battle scene here. I do like Captain America's grimacing face there. This is another Bob Layton cover here, and I do love the battle that's happening in the foreground in this image, but it was colored so poorly, in my opinion. Just that white and yellow image there. They should have just put the dynamic colors, bright, impactful images on the cover there, and they dropped the ball on this one. I'm sorry, but again, this is just a C in the run for me. I do like that it was Spider-Woman's first appearance. Next up, we got the classic Secret Wars number eight that introduced the alien symbiote costume into the Spider-Man mythos, which led, of course, to Venom, which led to Carnage and all the other symbiote villains that he's had to deal with here. A great what-if story would be what if Spider-Man never got his black costume, like what the world would be like in the Marvel mythos without the Venom and the symbiotes. Anyway, this is a classic cover. I don't have to say much about it. Mike Zek captured an image that will forever be remembered as a classic, and rightfully so. It's an iconic image. I love it. The colors, the layout, the design of it, the background here, Spider-Man in the forefront, nothing distracting from it. This is an easy A for me, and I'm proud to give it that top level ranking. Next up we got Secret Wars number nine, of course. And this is another Mike Zek cover here. And it's a pretty good one. They got an assault of the heroes on the villain's base there. And you get to see the mount and smoke coming out of it. I love how the energy is going into a focal point in the middle there. The colors are pretty good. This is a decent cover. If I wanted to see a melee and a battle and a good war between the heroes and the villains of the Marvel Universe, this is what I would have bought, and I think Jim Shooter knew that when he wrote this series. It is a good one, and I'm giving this one a B. All right, next up we got Secret Wars number 10. Now, this is one of my favorite images of all time. Mike Sek captured my all-time favorite image of Dr. Doom, and I know he's really hot right now with all of the announcements in the MCU, but this has always been my favorite Dr. Doom image. Something about him standing alone, the only villain with the balls enough to stand up to the Beyonder and say, I'm going to not only stand up against him, but I'm going to steal his power. And that really did make me see Doom in a whole new light there. And to see him battle-worn and still fighting and raging against what he thinks is the oppressor in this situation. I love it. I love the colors. I love the way that... Mike Zek was able to capture just a worn, torn, beaten villain still willing to fight the fight for his cause. This is an A for me, and it's an easy one. All right, next up, we've got Secret Wars number 11 here, and this is Mike Zek cover here that features Doc Doom taking his mask off. Victor Von Doom is revealing his visage, his face, his persona, to the heroes, a lot of them, for the first time. They'd never seen him. And he healed his scars that he got, and he presents himself to the heroes. I don't like seeing the back of him, but it does beg the question that you've got to buy this comic book and open it up and see what Victor Von Doom looks like without the scarring there, without his mask on. You finally get to see Doom without his mask. And that is the whole hook 
of this cover. Zek did such a great image of drawing the reaction of all of those heroes seeing Doom's face there. This is a great cover. I'm giving this one a B. All right, next up we got the final issue, which is Secret Wars number 12. And we've got Victor Von Doom with his face exposed to the whole world in this one. And he's holding his hand high as if he's victorious against the Beyonder. We all know he wasn't. But it is a great image, and it is iconic. They have redone this one and paid homage to it a ton of times, and it's great. I love the coloring on the forefront here, but the background. Why use red on all that detail in the background and then fade to pink and white in the trade dress, offset by yellow there? If they had used some other color palettes, I would have given this one an easy A. It was a great way to wrap up the series, and if I saw the pencils and the inks on this one in just black and white, I would very much think it's one of the best covers ever done. I love seeing an unmasked villain who you don't get to see very often, but in this case, the coloring drags it down to a B. All right, well, now that we have all of Marvel Superhero Secret Wars from 1984 ranked, let's look at the ones in the A tier and assign our favorite, that special S tier ranking. And this is going to be incredibly difficult for me here. We've got Victor Von Doom done by Zek. We've got the Black Costume's first appearance. We've got the Hulk holding up that mountain by Bob Layton. Now we've got that first one that kicked everything off in such a great way. Ah, uh, this is terribly difficult. I wish I could hold them all real close, but we've got to pick one. If I could just pick one, I would have to go with this number four by Bob Layton. Something about this image captured my imagination as a young collector, and I was almost too afraid to buy it. It was like a rated R comic book. Something about the violence of a mountain being dropped on top of heroes. I couldn't imagine a villain who'd be willing to do something so dramatic and so drastic and so deadly. But the Hulk caught it there on his back. How they got out of it. The cross-section of that mountain there. All the fallen heroes there. This is such a great image here. It's got to be one of my all-time favorites. It's one of my, in my top 20 covers of all time. Well, thank you for joining me on this trip down memory lane. 40 years, I would have never guessed. I do remember seeing these on the shelves and all the toys uh, also that were on the racks. But if you have any other storylines, runs, artists, series you want me to review, let me know. But thanks for joining me and have a great night.